Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here in the studio today. Really appreciate it. Uh, we had a little break last week. It was really nice. I got a ton of stuff done and had a really great week. So I hope you did too. Uh, we have a really simple program for you today, which is really nice. Just going to share a couple of uh, fun things and a couple of book acquisitions. So that's always really fun to do. And then I'm just going to get right into my demo today. I, we're going to have some special announcements coming up, surprises next week. So stay tuned for those. Uh, but in the meantime, oh, I do have one kind of special thing to share. I was, ex one of my pieces was accepted into the American um, Impressionist Society, the 22nd Annual National Juried Exhibition. So I'm really proud of it. And Bryce, could you go to the, um, the palette cam here? And this little piece here is, is my piece. It's Piazza Santa Spirito. It's just a little teeny little oil. And I painted that plein air in Italy, in Florence. And uh, I, I painted that the very first night that I was last there. And so it's a really special piece to me. It's a really special place. And um, I'm really happy to be included in this amazing show. It's the first time I've entered the show, and it's the first I and I was accepted. So it really, um, I'm really, really proud to be in the show. It's, um, it, if if you get a chance to go to their website and check out the the entries, uh, the um, just amazing, amazing painting. So um, just very honored to be included amongst these amazing painters. My friend Eric Jacobson is in the show, and he actually won an award for his lovely piece. His piece is, let me see if I can find it really quick. Um, oh, here it is. It's a still life, so um, it's beautiful. Bok choy and tomatoes. Oil on board, it's 24 by 30. So fairly substantial um, piece. So congratulations to Eric on that. Okay, next, I got a couple of books that I just am um, pretty astounded by. So I thought I would share them with you. Uh, I just got this book, Remarkable Diaries, The World's Greatest Diaries, Journals, Notebooks, and Letters. <laughs> and boy, so I'm going to share a few pa few pages that I picked out from this, this guy. Just pretty, pretty crazy. So first, first off, Notebooks of a Genius, Leonardo da Vinci, of course, of course, right? So uh, just astounding pages. And then what else? What, I have a bunch of these marked. The Voyages of Captain Cook. So that's really, really cool too. What else have we got here? Uh, Jose de Goya, uh, these, uh, these are just amazing. And then what else? What else did I have? Um, Mozart. So you guys have maybe heard me talk about my sketchbooks and how important they are and on what an admirer I am of, of keeping journals and sketchbooks. So this just really floats my boat. Um, Lewis and Clark. And it's so the 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 handwriting is just beautiful, and the the sketches it's just really really fun to to look at, and the way they designed it. This one, Eugene Delacroix, that is so beautiful. And I actually have this book. Um, I've had this a while, the Journal of Eugene Delacroix, and this is pretty heavy duty reading. <laughs> I have to say, I can't say that I've gotten through it, but um, little little tidbits. I obviously have gotten through it a little bit. I've I um, marked off some pages in here, so I have dug into it just a bit. Let's see what else here. A uh, Charles Darwin. Marla, can you repeat yeah. the uh, title of this book? Yeah, yeah, I'll show it at the end. But um, remarkable diaries. The world's greatest diaries, journals, notebooks, and letters. That's, and I love the design of the book too. It's beautifully designed. John Ruskin. John Ruskin was an art critic and, and an artist. And um, so, um, uh, actually, Monet I think talks about Ruskin. 
quite a bit. Henry David Thoreau. John Muir, of course. So beautiful. Just the, the handwriting alone is just incredible. Vincent van Gogh, it's really, uh, really cool. Look at this little sketch. It's really quite astounding. These are beautiful, beautiful drawings. And Beatrix Potter. I'm a big Beatrix Potter fan. And here, um, if you, if you, uh, you guys probably can't see, but she's got these little bunnies right here. She's got a little bunny on a leash. <laughs> Only in this photograph is Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter's first rabbit, Benjamin Bouncer, was her constant companion. He went on vacation with the family, and Potter took him for walks on a long string leash. <laughs> so it's really really fun to see those photographs. Paul Gauguin. Paul Clay. Beautiful treatise on color. Katie Colwitz. So this is Anne Frank, and she did sketches. Beautiful. And Frida Kahlo. Look at that. So neat. Yeah, so this is definitely, this one's really astounding, real keeper. And no, Mom, you did not get this for me, right? <laughs> my, mom, my mom always watches the live streams. <laughs> but she did find this Monet book for me. So I want to share this as well. Because this book um, on Monet, and I have many, but this book has some really special pieces that are lesser, lesser known, lesser published that I think are just astounding. So I thought I'd share a couple of those with you guys. Um, of course, his um, poplars are, are, have been published, but, but this one's a little, little different. And then this piece, uh, I've been talking to you guys about wanting to uh, raise the key of my paintings overall, a little higher key. And, and this one has a very compressed value. It's this, to me, it's just such a beautiful painting. Really simple composition, but just really astounding. And these as well. I just think that these are just kind of kind of transcendent, kind of beautiful, this, this one. And this looks like the paint application is really, really thick and heavy. And then this, this, these are some pages of his paintings of London. And almost every one is just wow, just wow, just the shimmering light. really enjoy these are and I had not seen these before you know I've seen the paintings of the Parliament but these were I was not familiar with he loved bridges he painted bridges now these are I, I have seen also really amazing and then it gets into his his lilies which are um, widely published and known, but also really beautiful. So amazing book, beautiful, beautiful edition. Love having it in my collection. Okay, so that, that's all the shares I have for you today. And so now I get to paint, yay. And I hope you guys are gonna, some of you are gonna paint along with me today. The reference photo that I have is kind of an interesting one. It's got a lot in it to dig into, and I wrote a couple notes down. So it's got it's got some elements that we're going to want to eliminate, right? Don't want the, that 
sign. It's got a little sign right here too. This this sign here and this one here. I guess we could switch over to the the um, yeah. So this this we're going to eliminate for sure, right? And this little bit here. A couple things that I think about it. Um, number one, I feel like this shape and this shape are well. This is bigger, but uh, I'm not sure I want that. I'm I I I think maybe I want the foreground to be larger and the this to be smaller. So I am thinking that I will make a square and make the foreground a, m larger and diminish the scale of this, this strip back here. Other things, other considerations. This, this guy, which is very, very strong and a uh, lot, lot of contrast, dark in value, is really centered. Really don't want that, so we're going to have to figure out how that's going to go. I, I'm thinking shift it over a bit and give this a little bit more. Now, I've talked quite a bit about not making things up, but I think we can fudge a little bit on this. It's, you know, it's foliage, and I, I think we could fudge this a little bit over here and get the, the whole thing to move to the right just a little bit. The other thing is this, the, the, the top of this tree is so right in, in the photo, at least, is very close to the edge of the picture plane. Don't want that either. So we're going to want to bring it down, I believe. I'm going to let these run right off. And I, it's totally fine to let elements run right off your picture. You don't want to try to squeeze things down into your, and like shave the tops off, because that's never a good look. And if you think about it, when we look out into the landscape, we don't see it all. We, you know, our, our, uh, our plane of vision is, is not everything out there. So it, it is totally okay to let things run off. One other consideration is this this guy, I love this wispy uh, tree that's that's uh, fall uh, deciduous tree lost its foliage and this is this is kind of probably later fall. It is also kind of tangent to the edge of this hillside back here. So kind of don't want that. So I'm gonna probably bring that up just a little bit so that it is clearly in front of this guy. Love the little structure. We want to make sure that the white of this trim is not too white. Otherwise, it's not going to, it's not going to live in the landscape. We don't want that. Uh, what else? What else I'm thinking? The, I love the recession, the sense of aerial perspective. So we want to make sure we push that pretty well. There's a little bit right here that is a suggestion, this little lighter blue back here that looks like maybe an even more distant hillside, one more layer after this one. And I love that. I'm going to try to catch that. Um, I like the little uh, posts in here. I think that those would be neat to include. The vineyards are beautiful. Um, so I think... Um, just kind of get into it and see what we get. The, the, that foreground also has a lot of interesting color, even though it, you know there's dirt, but it's got the green. And it, this sort of reminds me of some of um, Richard Schmid's paintings. He, he handles those large masses and foregrounds really well, really well. I didn't bring out one of his books today. I should have done that so that I could actually put my eyeballs on a couple of those to get a few ideas. It's always good to do. If something reminds you of something, just put it right in front of you where you can see it. Um, but all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into this guy. Um, give it a give it a go. I'm on the light green pastel mat, which I think is pretty good for the this foreground shape. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a Nice, nice size square here. 
So, um, Marla, just to clarify mm -hmm. for folks, uh, the Monet book is called Monet, Light, Shadow, and Reflection. It's edited by a guy named Ulf Custer. Forgive okay. me if I'm mispronouncing his name. It's a German book, and it was made in 2017. So that'll help them find okay, it. Okay, yeah, too. yeah, okay. Uh, Ulf Custer is spelled um, uh, U-L-F... K-U-S-T-E-R. That should, that, you yeah. should Google that, you'll be, you'll be Yeah, and um, I'm, that, I'm sure that came from Mullen Books. Mullen Books. Which is our, our great book seller that we frequent. It's a beautifully printed book. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful edition. It's just... Okay, so I want to avoid bringing this too much centered... But thinking about these vineyards, I want to keep the the gesture of this. I'm going to bring these posts over a little bit. All right, so now I want to avoid that tree. For and I want it right in the center. What am I going to do? Bring it over. So I lose some of this good stuff. So my, my wispy tree is closer to the edge. That's okay. And my here's my roof little structure. Kind of tucked in there. It's got some chimneys, windows. And then my hillside, I could bring this up. I can get away with bringing this up a little bit more. I don't, I just don't want it too close to the top. I'll bring this up. So here's my, my tree shape, and here's my the line of, which I'm gonna draw through of my hillside. Then I've got this light greenish yellow, it's got green and yellow in it, and then this other pine. I don't know what kind of pine it is, but it's beautiful, beautiful tree. There's a little bit of kind of dirt in there, which may, might be good to get. And this guy, I'm gonna let it run right off. And then the colorful trees, Th this one's really wispy, I like this. And there's my little spit of a different, the, the blue right in there. And then, then I've got the, this red guy right here, which is really beautiful. Okay, I think I'm set up pretty well. Oop. Nice. All right, what's gonna get me in the fastest and tell me the most right off the bat, and I think that's to get some kind of thing going in for those vines. I'm gonna start out a little more chromatic and a little brighter than I'm gonna end up, just so that um, I can get a feel for it. Just mop in some color. And I'm not, I'm letting it go outside of the area where I'm feeling, in other words, I'm not trying to stay in the lines of my drawing. And maybe maybe a little of this in there too.
And then, then as it as they recede back, they get there's a little more green on here. Mm, I want something a little different than that. How about this? So I'm I'm going a little brighter than I'm going to end up, but and that's intentional. Okay, now I'm going to put something in for that beautiful foreground green. It's a soft. But I might want to pump it up a little bit to start just so that I have a little more something to work with. I'm thinking this aqua to start. Again, I'm just putting a little bit more intensity chroma in to begin with, knowing that I can always settle it down a little harder to get it back if I want it. And I'm going to want some nice variety of color and texture in that foreground. I see that that dirt has got a little bit of purple in it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while I've got this in my hand, I, I feel like this would work up in here. And if you're using one color somewhere in your painting, you want to echo it elsewhere, so that makes sense. Um, now what's next? Um, don't like that stick. Okay. I don't like that one either. Not enough color for me. Let's see. One's a little better. Nope. This, these, the, the, the sticks, these are Terry Ludwig. Some of his are a little hard and give me a little, little trouble every now and then in terms of the application. Uh, there I want, this is that, and with the idea of staying a little higher key, not going quite so dark right off the bat, and let's get some of that, that red in for that, this guy over here. So here's a uh, question slash comment. Um, Marla, you go for the vines with the buttery soft pastels. Why don't you create an, an underlayer with some harder pastels? Um, well, the, the application that I put on there was fairly light. I'm, I'm not pressing super hard. It's pretty thin, so, I, so I'm airing on the side of the, the, the hue and value that I want right off the bat. And so I'm mediating my touch, the pressure, so that um, I'm still thin, uh, and um, but yeah, I, I I want that that color. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, you can mediate your 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 touch and use a softer pastel. But you have to, but that, that, you know, definitely takes a little bit of practice. Okay, I think it's kind of time to get some of the, um, the mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna start getting that hillside in and the sky, and then I'll get the house in. So I'm getting in that. That's really really bright. Woo! But that's okay. Um, 
That's fine for right now. All right, this, this here, the, the hillside, I want to make sure it's light enough, light enough value. It looks like this, but I'm tempted to go even lighter than that. Uh, let me, I've got my Giro's here. Let me see. I'm sort of tempted to head to something like that. Mm, but it doesn't, it's not as pretty. This is very pretty. So I'm going to use it. <laughs> and I'm going to drag this right over the top of this. See that? And then there's there's some suggestion back in here of, of hillsides that are not covered with trees. And that's good. Now that, that house in there, that's too dark for it. It's really close. I think this is the right thing, at least for now. And then I've got some rooftops. Can use, well, actually, I want to use something a little bit different, a little bit darker. Maybe more like this. No, that's the same thing. <laughs> That's not gray enough. How about this? That's not it either. So you have to you have to test it out. Let's see. That's too red because a lot of times the the pastels they have you know they have residue on them they they have dust on them so you, until you test them you can't really see what they are, and so that's why I have this test area here. I'm, Always kind of amazed when students don't take advantage of of that because you 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 know I don't always know well I'm gonna go ahead with this I don't always know and then all right. All right. And then there's the this this guy back in here. I like this tree back in here. All right, now it's time to get a little more serious. Oh, I've got plenty of time, right? I don't have to get serious yet. I'm not going to get serious yet. Gonna add on to the foreground. And this is some more muted tones for that foreground. Remember, I said I'm gonna start out bright and I'm gonna think about muting it down as I go along. So Marla, do you ever um, bl uh, blend your underpaintings with alcohol? Yes, occasionally. Kind of depends on what it is. We've done that on live streams. Before. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. And in the, um, many of our uh, videos in um, the monthly product. Yeah, so month. Yeah. Not all, but you know. Yeah. When it's when it's uh, appropriate. Yeah, it's super fun. Okay, I better get the sky in because I want to get the sky in before I get, it'll tell me a lot.
but I'm not doing it, right? <laughs> I better get the sky in. I'm not doing it. I got something. I got other stuff to do. I'm gonna get a couple darks where appropriate, but not, not nothing too too crazy. There's a lot of opportunity right in here to get some neat negative painting because there's a lot of stuff going on, and that's going to be fun. These kind of vineyard scenes can be, um, they're, I think they're really beautiful, but they can also be a little um, sometimes a little um, boring, I think. So I don't want it to be boring. So, okay, so now I want some, is this going to be dark enough? Maybe, maybe this will work. So now I'm coming into this, these vines. It's a little bit more grayed muted tones. And letting a little bit of the, that pop of color really have its have its way. Now we're getting somewhere. Now let's get the sky going. It's a really interesting sky, cloudy. But the, there's a kind of a pink in the sky and a blue gray. Um, so that, let's see. I want that pink. It's kind of a peachy pink. And it's kind of glowing.
Here's a uh, question. Mm -hmm. I always find it interesting that Marlon puts darker stuff, in this case, the evergreen. Um, you put the darker stuff before you put the lighter sky behind. Any thoughts on this? Well, I've put it down really thin, and I've done that so that I can knit the sky in and around the, the, um, the tree. I don't want to put the sky down and then put the tree over the top because then it's going to be product over product and it's going to be thick and not have that ethereal look that I want it to have. That's why. You know, I'll put dark, so now I'm putting some dark over the top of that. But I started out relatively thin with that intention to knit things around. I can only do this, what I'm doing right now, if the, if the application of the pastel is thin. That very airy feel. I want that. Now I want also that that more distant little spit of see if I can make that work. Not sure I can get that in there. I'll try. It's right back in here. Let's see if it'll it'll go. It'll read. We'll see. Right now it's Okay, I'm going to work on the vines a little bit because they're kind of screaming compared to everything else, which is okay right now. It's fine. Um, I have in mind to bring in some of my faves, these uh, golds. These are So another question, mm -hmm. um, soft light pastels will show better over dark, um, is that true? Um, at the moment I can't answer that question. <laughs> How about um, it can be difficult to darken light, same with oil paints, do you agree? I can't answer, okay. <laughs> I'll come back to it if I can. By the way, I think I heard the quail. No way. I did. I think I heard it. Oh, a boy. Yeah. There's a quail. My neighbors apparently are raising quail. And the, it's crazy that the repetitive sound it makes. It's really nutty. It wasn't making any noise this morning, but. No. And we thought, oh, it's going to, we're going to be able to hear it on a live stream. And then no quail.
why it usually starts at dawn and it keeps going all day. Maybe I was just hearing things. Oh, I don't hear it. I do not hear it. <laughs> so this the vines feel like they're really neat. They're really abstract to me. Now I want to work on the foreground and it's need to tie it together. Also, the 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 um little some little details in here and um yeah, I need to pull that foreground together a little bit more. Now I want to tie that foreground with this a little bit more and I'm going to do that by bringing in some similar a little bit more similar color. Um, what size paper do you work on and what do you cut it down to? I don't know exactly what size this is right at the, at the moment. I think it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't think and paint at the right this second. <laughs> Sometimes I can. Okay, I want to. I think I'm going to actually darken this a little bit. And I'm going to get the trim on the house and start to say something about that house. So 
want to keep it kind of subtle. And I don't really want to draw it. I want to keep it painterly if I can. And there's a little bit of a cast shadow in there that I think kind of gets to be important. It's a little darker right in here. I think that's important. Okay, what do we got? Oh, this I know. may be a little easier of a question, but do you see the picture of the painting? Like, do you see it in your mind before you start? The finish? Yeah. Um, sometimes I do. Today, I'm, I can't say that I did today, um, but I often kind of see a path of how to get to the finish more than I maybe see the finish, um, if that makes sense. You know, I try to let the painting guide me a bit. Um, So no, I don't necessarily see the finished painting. Okay, I think I've got that kind of established the way I want it. And now, um, this is, um, this is good. I've got, now I've kind of got myself set up to get in there and do some good stuff. Could you um, briefly explain what you mean by muddying the colors? Mudding? Muting yeah. the colors? Muddy, when you make them muddy. 
Is that the same as blending gone wrong? I don't think muddy color is bad. I don't usually talk about muddy color. What what in what context? We'll find out in a little while. <laughs> a little bit of a delay. Cuz I um Usually when I, what I think about is just a hev too heavy of an application of pastel that looks kind of thick and unpleasant more than um, muddy color. Maybe it's the same. But mud isn't necessarily bad. Oops, that's not what I want. Don't get a lot of sticks over here. Are we doing okay over there, Bryce? That, that machine is, is screaming. It's just not happy. <laughs> it takes a lot of um, um, power to, to do the live streams and sometimes that computer gets unhappy. Oh boy. Like that little little mark is looks like a little H. Don't want that. Okay, I'm saving a couple things that I want to do until the end because I know they'll be fun. <laughs> I like to do that. I not not so much for you guys, but for me, it's like a little treat. You know, you work really hard on a piece, and then at the end, you get to you get to do the fun stuff that really you know kind of make it sing.
You get to treat yourself because you did the hard work. a little payoff. Do you ever find that your test area is distracting? No. I need it. It would be distracting if I didn't have it. That would be, would be bad not to have it. Thanks for the super chats. That's great. Oh, yeah, thank you. But please visit the website too, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. It's where all the action is. That's where the action is. Do I want, I think I want those poles in there in the foreground, not sure. I want a little more time to play with the um, sky holes up here and really get these nice in the tree. Okay, now for some of the fun stuff. Right back in here, there's a little light popping through. Right, and back here. I've been waiting to do. I need this.
I haven't quite decided whether I want to include the um, posts in the foreground. I'm kind of um, torn about that. Kind of wavering. So Tim notices that there's some uh, empty spots in your in your tray there. Um, have you been rating your sticks for your other studio? No, uh-uh. There's so I have used a lot of sticks. Um, no, I haven't. Um, You're doing a lot of painting. Yeah. Um, you know my my tray's not usually like totally full anyway. But um. But. You know, it'd be interesting to look back on the other live streams and see. Um, maybe I've used a lot lately, I don't know. No, I haven't. I, I've been painting an acrylic in the other studio. So I haven't, haven't been. I do have that other set in there, but I haven't really made use of it very much at all. So I'm probably going to get those Giro's in here because I'm probably not going to um, do anything. I just don't have the time. have an idea of something I want to do and, and that's not light enough. It's not going to be light enough. What have I got down here that's light enough? Maybe this. This is fun. The, there's there's so many little kind of fun things to, like there's a little wire here in the vines. Kind of fun to like play with it. So Marla, um, Mike says thank you so much for these Friday demo these Friday demos, Marla. As a monthly subscriber, these. Um, always give me a boost for the weekend, and thanks always to Kevin, Bryce, and anyone else helping to make this happen. Oh, okay. thank you so much. We, it's fun to do. We, we really enjoy doing it. It really is. And um, we, it, it's funny though, we took just the week off and we came back and we're like, oh, how do we do this? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's how soon you forget, but yeah, we, we just really, it's, it, it's a joy. I just love to paint and I love painting for you guys. It's been um, really great. But it was nice to take the week off because we yeah. got a lot of, it's a secret, but we got a lot of work done. Yeah, we, it is a know. secret, but we got a lot of work done on the secret that we're going <laughs> to tell you about soon. 
And so we're really happy. It's a secret because we don't want to promise anything that we can't deliver on. So we're working on multiple fronts. That's the yeah, we part. are. We are. We're doing a bunch of different stuff. It's gonna, there's going to be a lot in store. Yeah, tons of uh, fun stuff too. We're we're you know that's the great thing about what we do. It's just all like just such a um, a happy thing. And boy, God knows we need that. We need happy stuff. But we really appreciate you guys. Because we need you. We wouldn't, we, we can't do it without you. So I'm just kind of carving out different stuff in here that I see that I like and there's all there's all kinds of there's so much in here um, really neat stuff in this scene just and then I put that color in there so I'm going to echo it down in here whenever you use a color you want to echo it and this has a lot Oh, I want to go up here and right in these peaks. It's kind of an opportunity to get some little pop of light. In there. That's fun. And I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to bring some of this blue. See that? The blue. Blue, blue. There's not really blue down here, but it kind of works. It's kind of abstract anyway. Now I'm using some darks, but the overall key of the of the piece is nice and light, like that about it. I'm gonna do one more thing. So I'm, this is a really hard pastel, and that doesn't do very well on the pastel mat. It's red. So it's carving into the layers and giving a little pop of color and a um, little texture, which I like. And um, yeah, there, there's lots more I could be playing with. This is a you know fun fun scene, but um, I think that's pretty good. So we'll be back next week with some surprises, and I um, hope you join us then. And um, in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.
I've got lots of um, lots of paintings queued up for the weekend. I have a show coming up in November that I'm like busily waiting, um, working on. And so I've got, I think I've got, um, well, I've got s about six big canvases pretty much there, ready to sign, ready to, to put the varnish layer on. And I've got about six more in progress. And I've got, uh, I, there's, I have plans for, I'm hoping, I'm hoping three more uh, that I haven't started yet that I'd like to. So <laughs> busy, busy, busy. My studio is just, uh, just overflowing with paintings right now out there. So maybe we'll share some of those next week too. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I hope you get to do some painting or sort of sketching, get your sketchbooks out and, or, or you know, get, even if it's just taking some photographs, get, get creative. All right, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.